everyone, and welcome to Indigenous Star Knowledge. I am so excited to have you here with us as we go through this class. This is this is very just very exciting. Um, as you know, the night sky has offered its magic to all of us who are here on Earth for millions, if not billions, of years. From birds who use the constellations as navigational aids in their migrations, to the beetles who orient to the Milky Way, to the trees who need the nighttime and that beautiful darkness of the night as much as they need the glorious sunlight of the day. To ourselves who have long marveled at the beautiful expanse of starry skies, perhaps over the vast inland seas that we have up here or beyond the, the firelight, the glow of the firelight, the night skies have inspired billions. There are so many ways to see the stars, as many ways as there are people probably, and certainly as many ways as there are cultures. Colonialism, that is, the moving in into another person's territory and the destruction of, that, of those people's culture and ways of living on the land and ways of being, has been going on for some 6,000 years, but in particular in the last 500 years has been a ramped up and intensification of that colonial process. And during these last 500 years in particular, ways of knowing the sky as well as so many other ways have been targeted for destruction, targeted for elimination, and as, re as a result many of these ways of knowing the night sky have faded. Some have been completely and entirely lost. However, there are still people who know these stories, who know these ways, or are piecing things together from other people and um, pulling it all together into this beautiful tapestry of knowledge and understanding as we work to revitalize those ways and bring them back so that we all can understand them and learn from them and know those ways, know, know those ways of knowing. Learn to see the stars from the people whose home this is from the people who are indigenous to this place is valuable for all of us, whether it is our own ancestral homeland we're talking about or it is a homeland that our ancestors did not come from um, but that we are now living on. Needing to learn those ways can be invaluable in so many ways to learn you know, more than just what is Orion or what is the Big Dipper um, because there are so many stories that go far, far beyond those constellations. Um, stories that are indications of cultural ways of seeing the world. When you learn these new cultural ways of seeing the world, of seeing the night sky, it brings different types of understandings. Not only of the night sky, of course that happens too, but also of ways of life lived on the land. Because people's stories of the night sky reflect how they live on the land. It reflects their way of being, their way of living in the world. These star stories also help us understand different ways of knowing. Everybody has different ways of knowing in every culture. Our contemporary Western culture is very focused on science, and science has many valuable insights to offer, but it only looks at what is measurable and quantifiable. Um, so it can it, it, it is limited in its range. All of us have limitations in our, in our ways of knowing. So learning how to come to truth in the universe through other ways of knowing is helpful too. Um, and that's one aspect that you can get out of learning from uh, learning these stories and learning these understandings of the night sky is learning to see the world, the universe, in a new way and in a different way and coming to respect that there are ways of knowing that perhaps we or each of us, depending on the culture we have been raised up in, may not be aware of and may not realize but that those ways of knowing worked for those people and um, the ways of knowing that we were raised up of worked for us ways of knowing that for other people worked for them and if we kind of bring those all together we come to some really interesting and beautiful understandings of this great vast and mysterious universe um, of which we are all a part. In this class we're going to particularly focus on Anishinaabe ways of understanding the, the, uh, the night sky, particularly the Ojibwe. The Anishinaabe of course consists of the three fires, the Odawa, the Badawatomi, and the Ojibwe. Some of you may also know the Ojibwe as the Chippewa. This is where we are here with Northern Michigan University. This is the Anishinaabe homeland. So it is um, learn really important to learn to see the stars from that traditional Anishinaabe perspective. So I wanted to give some thoughts on storytelling, particularly as many of you may uh, be teachers or in other ways be thinking of wanting to share these stories. And sharing is good, but it's really important to remember a few things. One is that having to always keep at the front of your mind that these stories belong to the cultures from which they came. So for these Anishinaabe stories, these stories belong to the Anishinaabe culture. They are that they are the intellectual property of the Anishinaabe nation and the different um, bands that are part of that Anishinaabe nation. When we're telling stories, 
Um, it's important to remember to always be true to the story and to the storyteller. In fact, if you are a teacher or somebody else who's going to be sharing these stories in a public way, it's really, I would recommend, it's best to let the stories speak for themselves, either in books like what we have in this class, um, through podcasts, uh, or in other ways that you can actually have access to the recognized and traditional storytellers within whatever culture you are looking to um, share stories from. If that makes sense, so needing to find those, those storytellers who are willing to share, or those storytellers who have their stories recorded in some format. That, that is really key. Um, also, when you go to share a story, it's really important to be looking at what your purpose is in sharing the story. Looking to profit from it for your organization or for yourself, if that's your motive, is to profit from it. Oh, cool, it's Indian stuff. People are going to like this, so let's put this out there and then, you know, give this, have people come and pay us to hear this. That's not really being true to the culture. That's not really being true to... Um, the stories in that way, but if you're looking to share this in a good way because you're wanting to share this information, share these ways of knowing, share these ways of understanding, that that's something different. Again, it's always best to have it spoken in the words of respected and recognized storytellers um, in, in whatever format you can um, obtain those in. I also want to mention that, at least for the Anishinaabe, when, traditionally when you do storytelling, it, you're supposed to only tell stories when the snow is on the ground. And there are people who today strictly adhere to that. There are others today who say, well, with the possibility of these stories disappearing um, or with our, our really strong desire to try to revitalize these stories, it's important that whenever you do get a chance to share these in a good way, that you share them. Um, so in that way, in this class, although we, did, we may have snow um, when this starts up, uh, in this class, even if we don't have snow, we will be sharing the stories um, but that's not intent meant to be disrespectful of the traditional way of sharing. It's meant to be taking uh, full, uh, taking the opportunity to offer this to people so that people can learn and people can know and understand these ways of knowing. All right, I think that's pretty much everything I have. Um, I just want to say again, welcome to this class, and I am so excited to to be here in this beautiful, wonderful journey with you and to see where we're all going to go this semester. All right, we'll talk soon. Bama P. See you later.